good morning and welcome to this e-drilling webinar. Uh, today we uh, have titled the webinar to be forecasting and what if getting more value from your real-time drilling support center or function. My name is uh, Morten Svensson. Uh, together with me I have uh, Sven Inge uh, and um, so uh, the content, uh, let's see, the content of today's presentation is uh, what work is usually done in a real-time center, what is live well support compared to conventional monitoring, what is forecasting, what is forward-looking, <coughs> what is what-if simulations, and when we have been looking briefly on these topics, we will go over to look a bit more on how we actually do forecasting and forward-looking and uh, what-if simulations. Yes, first of all, uh, uh, what is uh, a real-time center doing today? Uh, the real-time center gets, of course, real-time data. They store this data and they display this data. And uh, drilling data is then monitoring by a drilling analyzed. And the rig is informed if an analyst detects an event. Uh, the real-time center also do some ad hoc simulation uh, if something occurs. So uh, what is then the uh, difference between conventional uh, monitoring done in the real-time center today? and the framework of what we call live well support, where you do this in, uh, in, with real-time simulators. Uh, on uh, conventional monitoring, uh, you do real-time uh, measurements. You compare pre-simulation uh, results with measurements. You do manual uh, diagnostics. And you run new simulation when things change. Uh, in a, a live well support environment, uh, the simulations are done in real time. Uh, you compare simulation results with measurements in real time. You have always calibrated models. You have automatic and manual diagnostics. You have forecast simulation. You have forward looking simulations and what if simulations. We come more into the details as we uh, proceed with a webinar. So what is real-time simulations? Uh, real-time simulations is when uh, the real-time data from the rig is driving the simulator. And uh, the simulation is then calibrated uh, against the actual well. And then it's easy to detect problems by looking on uh, at deviations. Uh, you can see on the example below uh, where you have a drop in measured standby pressure from the sensor compared to the calculated standby pressure from the simulator. This indicates uh, a washout in the drill string and this is typical how you get value from uh, running real-time simulations. Uh, when you have a real-time simulation, then it's easy to do forecasting, and then you do forecasting on the actual well on the to verify the drillability before the operation, uh, during a, a section, uh, before next section, or when you do a change in the drilling plan. Uh, you can update uh, your risk register related to these forecast simulations. Uh, also, when you have real-time simulations, then you can have automatic forward-looking. This means that you have a separate simulator that's doing forward-looking. And then you can forward-look ahead in time or at a certain depth to foresee events and get automatic messages like you see below that you have a forward simulated kick or forward simulation loss area. Then it's always comparing the forward looking with the boundaries uh, that you have for the, the well. Then 
if the forward looking predicts something to happen, then you're able to run a simulation with, of course, a calibrated and updated model uh, to test out different uh, solutions to, to fix or to uh, avoid an upcoming problem. Then you can typically enter rotational speed, ROP, update another density, different flow, and then you set the end condition for either a time or a depth and run the simulations. We come a bit back on this and show an example later. So what is uh, live well support? It's real-time monitoring where you compare sensor data with simulated data. Uh, you update uh, a real-time uh, 3D view for uh, visual understanding and to see your risks in the well. You do what if an automatic forward-looking. You can do, uh, you do daily forecast to update your risk picture ahead. Uh, this can be done uh, also in a 3D environment and you simulate the next operation with an updated risk picture. <clears throat> yeah, and now we will go a bit more in details on how you actually do these different things that Sven Inge have talked about. So if we start with the forecasting, because that's the first thing you do. You can do it during the planning, or you can do it just before you start an operation, or, or when you start an operation. So the first thing you do is actually setting up a well configuration. So, so you need to set up the well that you are going to do simulations on. Uh, and uh, I can start up uh, a simulation for you. So first of all, what you do uh, when you start this, uh, you set up your, uh, your well in the well configuration. This is uh, just a data set that we use for, for testing where you have, uh, you have your formation data, your depths, uh, you have your pressure profiles, temperature profiles, your survey, uh, you have your uh, the BHA or the tubular that you're going to use for drilling. Uh, so, so, and it's quite easy to update as well. So when you are actually have built the BHA and start putting that in a hole, you can start doing simulations on it. So it's quite easy and it can be connected to a database so you can just use a, a kind of a file structure to store the data as well. So the next thing then is to kind of set up the simulation that you are going to run. And I have set up this according to kind of the drilling program that we had. So this is a section where we start from the casing shoe with a fluid already displaced in the well. Uh, so we are, you are, uh, this, we're going to drill to uh, 2,400 meters, that's our TD for this section, with a 50 meter an hour ROP, and we have a flow rate of 2,800 liters per minute. We have a rotational speed, and here you also have the uh, connections, so you have the stop. So we only put in one line of boxes for the simulation to run it. So if I press Play here gives me a, a error message for some uh, configuration, and now you, you can run it in, in full speed. So now you will get a simulation for this. So if we just zoom it out a bit to one hour, you can see I have my ECD at the bottom, casing shoe, uh, my, the rotational speed, I have my flow in and flow out. And, I, and, and you have some temperatures. And the dips that you see in the pressures and flow is due to all the connections that we set up. So this is a very easy way to set up a simulation, and this is just drilling from one point to another point. Uh, let's see. You can also follow the progress here from, from the section and also have your depth there. You could also plot the depth, so, so it's just uh, kind of a default setup uh, here. Uh, this was kind of for, for the hydraulic simulation, but uh, you can also do simulations on uh, well control and torque and drag. But the thing here is to kind of, you, you're going to go through your drilling program, 
if you have any kind of uh, happen things that happen, you can do simulations on it. You can do uh, on the ongoing operations, and you can do 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 uh, new simulations whenever you need to. And and one thing that we see that is kind of very useful is if you if you do simulations every day, you can kind of forecast what is going to happen during the next 24 hours or the next day to have control of your operation. And then we go over to the real-time simulations uh, on itself. And as with the with the uh, with the forecasting, you use the same configuration, uh, so you don't need to do any changes on it unless there are some changes. So if you, if you change your fluid or anything, but we also update the configuration when when something changes. So what we have here is that we run our models in real time. We have you have automatic diagnostics that helps you to detect issues when something happens or prior to actually happens, if that's possible. So it's typically on uh, hole cleaning issues, uh, washout of the drill string, uh, temperature issues, gain loss issues, uh, pressure issues, kind of how, how is your well pressure according to your pressure window uh, on the active volume and also tripping speed. And also, since we're talking real time, we are also looking into, which is, which is embedded in here, that you can do forward-looking simulations and what if. So let's open up a typical screen uh, of uh, how your screen could look like if, if you do an operation. So here, we, we, on, the, on the left side, this is called the real time shortlist, where you have your measured data and also calculated data. So we have divided it here with colors. So the green ones there is the, the calculated uh, values and, uh, and the white one is, is measured. Uh, so if we, for example, look at the ECD here. So here is that about red line and a blue line, which is the uh, window uh, pressure window at bottom at all times. So that will move as you drill. Uh, according to the pour and, press, pour and frack pressure curves you have. And, and the yellow one is your bottom hole ECD, and the turquoise is the ECD at casing shoe. We could also plot in here the real-time ECD measurement and so on, but for, for this well, that, which this log is from, we didn't have that measurement. Uh, another thing is that we have over here, for example, you can see your standby pressure, and also the calculated standby pressure. These are now on top of each other, so they are not kind of, you see some changes somewhere, some places, but it's basically following each other during this operation. The same thing for measured flow in and the calculated flow out. So we have some kind of control of, of that. We also have the uh, hydraulic uh, uh, profiles of the entire well, where you have your pore pressure, factor pressure for entire well, and your ECD uh, for the entire well. The green one is the ECD for the entire well. But the casing shoe is at 2,000 meters, so we are basically isolated over here. Yeah, uh, we could also have a look at, this is kind of a test data set, so we have a lot of diagnostics messages coming here, but as you see, it's just checks on the uh, development in the active uh, tank volume and compares to the changes in the calculated pit gain. Uh, so, so there's some deviations there. Uh, it, it, yeah, so it looks at the changes all the time on that. And also, uh, so we, you have one showing a loss and one showing a kind of a kick, but it's it's kind of just a, it's the data set set up to do this for us. We also have on the tripping velocity, uh, so. Uh, it's larger than the limit uh, that you have set. Yeah. We don't need to go through all these different diagnostics. But what we do here is that we, 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 the system is kind of giving you automatic diagnostics to help you to make the correct decisions uh, and hopefully in time to, when you need it. So, and, and you also have, yeah, as I said, forward looking and what if. If we then go over to the next slide we are going into forward looking so what we have set set up here for you is that you are running on a, a preset time or depth ahead uh, and 
uh, you can compare, for example, results uh, against known data. So, for example, you can look at your ECD curve and compare to your uh, pressure window. And we also have diagnostics from the forward looking on kind of in, impending kick and loss. So if I go to my depth base, uh, if we had been drilling at the moment, uh, let's see what, how far we are. Yeah, we are on a, on a connection at the moment. So while we are starting drilling, we will see a, a, third, a fourth line coming up here, which is the uh, uh, forward-looking ECD curve. So we'll show you uh, the, the ECD that downwards in the well, but also uh, as time goes ahead. So uh, I'm not sure if we have time to wait for that to happen. We can go back to that afterwards. And the next thing is the what-if simulations. And as Sven Inge mentioned, if something happens or you want to want to investigate something, you can do a what-if simulation. So if uh, if I go back to this screen uh, and I would like to do a what-if, I can select my what-if uh, wizard, uh, and now it picks up the uh, real-time parameters right now from the from the rig. And I would like it to kind of drill a bit faster. I want to have a higher ROP, and I would like to have a uh, I can have a low flow rate of, of it. So now I set up uh, the end conditions is in 10 minutes of dr drilling with the 100 meters ROP, or until I reach 2,100 meters. And then I just press my simulator, and it simulate button and now it's transferring the state from the server to my client and it also makes a copy of the plot that I was using which is a what if plot and when when it gets started it will start producing uh, that simulated data so now we are producing data here and uh, we uh, you can check whether this would kind of give you a different pressure or something like that. And I think we just head on to the next part, which is the risk matrix or the real-time visualization. So we have this virtual 3D available to present known issues and risks. Uh, and we kind of set it up during the planning and we update the events as we go along. So I will, I'm not connected to my server at the moment. I, so now I'm connected. So what I have here is, I have a visualization up here in the corner. I have my casing shoe with my uh, casing shoe ECD uh, uh, sensor, which is my calculated ECD at casing shoe all the time. I have some information that this is the 10 three quarter liner and I have a FIT on 185.76. Uh, over here I have a kind of more zoomed out view where I see a lot of other valuables in the area, but you also see uh, this is my ECD uh, gradient below the casing shoe and down to the bit. And I have, as you see, I have a lot of information over here as well. I have my, uh, my bit depth sensor showing my, my bit depth. I have my PWD ECD sensor, and this is my calculated because this well I didn't have a measured ones. So, but you could have your calculated ECD, your measured ECD, and your, your ECD from other vendors as well showing up here at the same place. And you can position it where you actually have your sensor. Uh, and it's quite easy to kind of if if I would like to. If you would like to add some more information, I have uh, I have just some information in here. If if you would like to have some more information added when something happens, I could you could write in um, uh, uh, higher torque readings. Uh, you could have some inf uh, icon on that. Just kind of a okay. That's just information. Uh, you, your bit depth was 20 
31 when this happened and then you get this message in here at that position and as you see this one got another color than the other ones but, but you can change them to look however you would like them to look like so this is a typical thing to add the information and make it visible for all the users in the system so I think we just kind of go, uh, go to the next. So what is the next thing? What is happening afterwards? And I think Sven Inge, you can take this. Yeah. So what is the next? <coughs> of course, uh, the, the, as uh, technology and the digitalization will, uh, will come along, uh, you will get more and more automatically collection of well configuration. Uh, you uh, will also get automatic calibration of models uh, and then uh, you will also get more automatic diagnostics and uh, the what if uh, simulations and uh, forecast simulations will be automated and they will base, be based on the, both diagnostic messages coming up and the best practice for the different uh, companies uh, that's using it. So you can import your own best practice document into the um, the set of, of how the what if simulation should be done. And uh, then you will come onto an automatic advisory system based on all the above. So um, real time simulation, forecast simulation, and what if sim simulation will enable uh, better uh, automated uh, drilling control and uh, and be able to run uh, or uh, drill the uh, the perfect well in in uh, in in all its aspect. Yeah, <clears throat> that's good. So uh, you know, now we have kind of gone through the slides that we had, and uh, we have time for questions, and I. Did not say that you could ask questions in the question box in the go to meeting web application, but we have got a couple of questions already. And if you have any more, just feel free to ask ask them while we are still here. So we got uh, first question is: Is this a service eDrilling is delivering? And uh, that's a good question because. Uh, uh, but kind of to start with, eDrilling is a software company which provides software that you can utilize to uh, in your operations. Uh, we we have been delivering services earlier, and we will always kind of help our customers get to use this. But we uh, would rather like our customers to use it themselves, the oil companies or the service companies. Uh, so, and the live well support that we talked about is kind of a framework that we have built used, utilizing our product portfolio uh, to kind of uh, help the uh, clients or help you uh, drill better wells. Uh, so, and then next questions. Uh, who use this uh, these tools today? Uh, and we have uh, several clients that uses uh, these software tools. Uh, some clients use all, all our portfolio, and some clients just use parts of it. Uh, but it's uh, uh, companies like uh, major oil companies uh, through the world that's using our software tools. Okay, we have another question here. What models are being used to perform the simulations? Uh, good question. Um, the models that's been used is uh, it's around models. Uh, it's um, it's uh, it's physical models. Uh, it's uh, dynamic models. It's uh, based on pure physical models uh, that takes into account all the different dynamic behavior in a drilling uh, operation. Which means that if you stop uh, if you uh, stop circulating, the, the formation will still heat up the, uh, the fluid and you will get changes in the ECD and, and so on uh, throughout uh, on, on the whole well profile. So it's, uh, it's the most advanced models 
that's uh, available in the market today that's been uh, that's used in this uh, in these uh, products yeah so if you, if you can a bit more detail so we basically our core models are a hydraulics model which is a hydraulic and temperature model and as Oninge said it's a dynamic model but we also have a torque and drag model that is coupled together with this when we run it in real time so running a real-time system, you have a, a hydraulics model feeding the torque and drag model with uh, the temperatures, densities, so it will calculate proper buoyancy, for example. Uh, and on top of that, we have our own diagnostics, we call it a module, uh, that is kind of doing checks on the measurements and the calculations all the time to provide diagnostics messages. And the, these models has been verified both in, in real-time applications uh, or real-time verifications in benchmarking towards other and so on. So, so the, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so another question. How is the real-time data verified? So for years that has been kind of the core thing that we have been working on is actually to verify our real-time data and simulations compared to that. Uh, so when we have been doing checks uh, with real-time data we have always kind of been doing uh, on the measurements on on the rig and everything but we have also compared it to the logs afterwards from the downhole tubes. But if you talk about kind of verifying of data quality of the real-time data, uh, we we don't um, we do some data quality checks, uh, but not at that extent as you probably should could ex think. But uh, we we kind of trust the real-time data that we get from the rig, and we we see that it's really important that if you have real-time data coming uh, from the rig they should all be treated the same way for all the kind of different models or systems that you use it for. So the data quality check should all actually be uh, on an earlier level than our system. Yeah. Yeah, is it integrated with the rig system or does it run as a separate screen on a separate screen? And uh, uh, that's a good question because we have our own software tools and visualization clients that we use to visualize the data. And we are very often we, we, we have our system onshore or in a real-time center. Uh, and we are connected to the WITSML or WITS data stream that comes from the rig uh, but we can also kind of feed data back to the data source system to the WITSML uh, server so if, if you kind of use a, a, a different vendor for the visualization you could have the system running on the side and feed data, data back to the system so that is basically up to, to the different uh, clients what they prefer to do okay that's all the questions. Uh, I have also added the presentation in the handout uh, box or folder on the uh, go to webinar application. So if you want to have the presentation, you can uh, uh, find it there. Uh, we will also uh, put the uh, webinar on YouTube uh, so, so you can actually see it later on as well. So, and if you have any other questions, Feel free to contact uh, Sven Inge or me. Uh, the contact information is on the last slide. So thank you all for joining us uh, in this uh, webinar.